Hi everyone, this is Balash from Arby's Gadget Reviews. Today I will review a special set from Kada. It was created to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the famous manga Initial D. This is the Mazda RX-7 FD. The set has an official license from both the creators of Initial D and Mazda as well, which is quite an achievement from Kada. The design of the box is really nice. On the front you see the car with some stylized artwork and the hero himself. On the back we get some details about the functions and apparently there are some additional pieces provided to turn the car into the upgraded version. The set can also be motorized with the Kada power pack that you can purchase separately. There is also some cool artwork on the sides, you can see the dimensions and also the real car itself. Now let's open the box. Inside we find two additional cardboard boxes, both with a very nicely designed artwork. I think Kada really went the extra mile when they designed the packaging. You can see the Kada logo on them and also the logo for the 25th initial D anniversary. These two boxes contain the manuals with a sticker sheet and tons of numbered bags. Sorry for not counting all the bags, you really get a lot. The manuals and the sticker sheet has extra protection. As you see, there are actually three separate manuals. The manual begins with some beautiful artwork about the different cars and the heroes of the series. After that we see the different phases of the build, apparently there will be 5 of them. So time to start building. Before opening the first bags, please make sure you leave a thumbs up on the video if you like it, and also subscribe and tap the notification bell, this way you won't miss the upcoming awesome review videos. As I noticed with the previous Kada set there are some cool unusual parts that are very useful. In some cases you also need to pay attention, as there are very similar pieces as well, like these half stud beams with and without an axle hole at the end. We start the assembly with the front axle, and quite surprisingly the wheels are already added at this very early stage. The instructions are easy to follow, but I still don't like two things. The color change of the element added in the previous steps is confusing sometimes, and for me red remains the color for something wrong and green should be the right version. Here's another thing that is a bit confusing for the first sight. The order of the steps suddenly changes from left to right to right to left. This step is not an easy one, there are a lot of things that need to connect and also stay in place. Once completed you can see that weird front suspension geometry, I wonder how it will work. Once we add a few pieces you can also see how the suspension itself works, there are rubber pieces but also rubber bands at the bottom. So here is the front section with the steering already working, there are a lot of gears between the steering wheel and the steering rack. I'm not sure about this axle with stop on the left side, you cannot push it fully in as the other end is blocked, looks a bit weird. Now comes the rear section of the car, we start with the rear axle. As you see there is no differential, but a drift car does not need one anyway. There are four fairly soft springs in the rear suspension, and the rear wheels are added too. Before starting to add the body parts, the front and rear sections of the chassis are joined and some additional reinforcement is added. The front of the car has quite a few details with various different building techniques used, I really like it. The top section is angled but it fits perfectly and does not move around. Once ready we can attach it to the chassis and we are finished with the first phase of the build. Bags 2 start with the doors and the floor of the cabin. Snot building is quite common and here you can see a very interesting method to have an inclined part fixed on top of the door. After adding the cool red seat we can put the whole section in place and then add the front left wheel arch as well that adds a bit more stability. We do it for the other side as well and we are finished with the first manual. I also added the rear view mirror I forgot on the left side. 
Now applying the first stickers of the set, I think the quality here could be still improved. It is quite difficult to remove the stickers from the sheet. The rear wheel arch has again some interesting techniques. This section goes on top of this one, but thanks to these rotating parts it won't be parallel to the rest of the assembly. I'm not totally sure this would be a Lego connection in the Lego world, but it sort of works here. Here is the completed rear section with a lot of cool angles, time to attach it to the rest of the body. Whoops, as I see I missed the tile here, let's put that in place. The rear wing is the last item to add from Bex 3, now let's jump to Bex 4. Here comes the central section of the build with the handbrake and the gear shifter. It is quite a challenge to put it in place, and unfortunately something will surely fall off from the top when you try to insert it. The roof and the windshield is also pretty difficult to install. The front section of the car is quite fragile at the wheel arches, you need to be really careful and some repair is needed for sure during the process. I already took off the rear view mirrors after knocking them down a dozen times. All we have left are some details in the engine bay, then the hood and a bunch of stickers all around the car and we are finished. The car looks very cool from all angles. Once completed it became much more stable, does not come apart easily. We only have a few working functions this time. The doors can be opened, the mechanisms work smoothly. The hood can be also opened, but it is a bit challenging. We have functional steering and it is connected to the steering wheel, but there's no hand of god steering so the car is more suitable for a display than for playing. As you saw during the building process, there's independent suspension on all wheels. Despite the car being finished, we still have a lot of unused parts. As you see, the remaining bags contain parts for this upgrade, we can make a highly customized version of the car. There's also a very cool stand to build, and of course, according to the CADA best practices, there's an official RC conversion available. You need to purchase the RC pack separately, but it can be used with multiple sets. I will show you the upgrades, the stand and the RC conversion in the next video, so make sure to like this video, subscribe and tap the notification bell as well. See you next time, bye bye!